24-year-old female officer had just left work when she was shot to death early this morning in the Avalon Park neighborhood. I had an opportunity to speak with the family of this officer, who, as you might imagine, is completely shattered. <clears throat> I won't speak for uh, the mother, but I can tell you that she poured everything that she could into her child. Twenty-four-year-old Ariana Preston was an intelligent, ambitious, hardworking, passionate, and loving young woman. Ariana was a light whose smile brightened any room. She continued to lift as she climbed by serving and protecting her community as a Chicago police officer for the last three years. Her goal was to make a change on this earth and to show young people that policing is a profession that can make a difference in the community. Ariana was on top of the world. Things were going really well for her. She had an amazing career and was set to graduate from Loyola University on May 13th with a Master's of Jurisprudence from the School of Law. Little did her friends, family, or colleagues know, a chain of events would soon take place that would change their lives forever. Just before 2 a.m. on May 6th, Chicago police were called to the 8100 block of South Blackstone Avenue in the Avalon Park neighborhood on Chicago's south side for reports of multiple shots being fired. Upon arrival, they would find an unresponsive young woman lying in the front yard of the home, suffering from gunshot wounds. The shooting happened at about 1.40 this morning at 81st and Blackstone Avenue. That is the Avalon Park neighborhood. Officers responded to a call of shots fired, and when they got to that address, they found the officer. Uh, she was off duty at the time, and she was suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. The victim was identified as 24-year-old Ariana Preston, who was taken to the University of Chicago Hospital, where she was sadly succumbed to multiple gunshot wounds to the upper chest. An investigation revealed that Ariana had just finished her shift in the 5th District on the far south side. At some point after arriving home, several rounds of gunshots were fired, with Ariana being left for dead just yards from her home. In the midst of the chaos, Ariana still managed to fire back three times. An arriving officer rendered aid, placed her into the back of a squad car, and took her to the University of Chicago Medical Center, where she was sadly passed away. Although CPD isn't releasing a lot of specifics about the case, sources confirm that her service weapon was also stolen. Police are still working to determine if Ariana was targeted or perhaps the victim of a robbery. Ariana's loved ones were grief-stricken after learning the news outside of the University of Chicago Medical Center. Dozens of Chicago police joined a processional as Ariana's body was taken from the hospital to the medical examiner's office. Hours after the shooting, police went door to door to see if neighborhood smart doorbells and surveillance cameras caught any video of the shooters. Chicago police officers, along with faith and community leaders, also held a prayer circle. Mayor-elect Brandon Johnson, in a statement, said the following. I'm outraged and devastated by this horrific violence against a public servant and will do everything to support the family and CPD during this traumatic time. A public servant being killed in the middle of the night underlines the fierce urgency of the public safety crisis in our city. My top priority is building a better, stronger, safer Chicago where all of our residents can live and work free from the threat of violence. The mayor and officers were fighting back tears during a press conference as they provided brief details about what happened. Congressman Jonathan Jackson is calling for people to extend prayers for Ariana's family and for justice in prosecuting the shooter. Mayor Lori Lightfoot spoke with family members earlier in the day and says their lives have been shattered 
and they are requesting privacy during this devastating time. The detectives are working to learn if the victim was targeted or if this was a random robbery. Loved ones grief-stricken and heartbroken outside UFC Hospital. One of Chicago's bravest killed right in front of her own home. 80 person black, so we got a person shot. It's an off-duty PO. Get an ambulance here now. Police responded to a shot spotter alert. Multiple gunshots were heard. 24-year-old Ariana Preston was found laying in the front yard. Sources say her service weapon and badge were missing. The officer picked our officer up put him in the back of a squad car and immediately brought to University of Chicago Hospital where she succumbed to her wounds early this morning. It happened here at 81st and Blackstone just before 1.45 a.m. Interim Police Superintendent Eric Carter says Preston had just finished her work shift. Right now, we ask that you keep mm -hmm. the officer and her family in, in, in your prayers. Preston worked for the department for three years. Loyola University confirming she was on track to graduate May 13th with a master's of jurisprudence from the School of Law. Mayor Lightfoot speaking with family members earlier in the day saying their lives are shattered. When I got the call this morning, I wasn't just a mayor, I was a mom. And thinking about what the parents of this young officer would be feeling today. Dozens of Chicago police joined the processional as Preston's body was taken from UFC to the medical examiner's oh, office. Man, now, Jesus, we bind up all these eerie spirits. With fingers intertwined. And we believe her death will not be in vain. The pain felt. Let the blood of Jesus the replace man, the, blood the blood on the street. The blood, the blood. Yeah. Yeah. Spews through this prayer circle. And you can only pray that something like this doesn't happen. But unfortunately, sometimes it comes right to your front steps. As community and faith leaders joined 5th District Chicago officers in remembering one of their fallen sisters in blue, Officer Ariana Preston. It hurts. I knew this young woman. You see these young people come willing to serve. The university saying it's shocked and saddened by her tragic passing. As an undergrad student, Preston also traveled abroad with Illinois State University. Her former ISU professors saying in a statement, Ariana wanted to be the officer who would speak for the most vulnerable in society. We're planning a graduation, God, but now they have to plan a home going, God. Every time we lose a servant, a, a, a hero, I mean, it's pretty tragic. Neighbors, community members, and longtime residents of the Avalon Park neighborhood were both saddened and shocked as they say things such as this do not happen in their neighborhood. Although they say it isn't uncommon for violence to occur in the surrounding areas, the brutal murder of Officer Ariana Preston is one that hit too close to home. Although they did not know her personally, they hope for more answers soon for her family and for the safety of the neighborhood. Neighbors we spoke to, especially those who knew her, tell us she was a dedicated officer and are still processing her loss. I know something, I tell her. And if she knows something, she's telling me. So that's the way we work it out. Hours later, police going door to door to see if neighborhood smart doorbells and surveillance cameras caught video of the shooters. Sergeant Pickham with Chicago Police were... Uh... Just looking for cameras in the area in regards to the police officer shot. And then I thought, this is right at home. Tina Wallace gave us ring video of the officers searching her neighborhood. And I've been here 10 years and never had anything come around here. This neighborhood is safe. She says their block has an active neighborhood watch. She walks with Verily Brown, one of the residents who's been here longest since 1965. I mean, it has come at 79th in Avalon, it has come at Ellis, it has come at Dorchester, but never this close to us. They don't know the woman killed, whose last Instagram post proudly shows off her graduation garb, but they hope there are more answers soon for her family. But my heart dies for them. And for the safety of this neighborhood. The day after her senseless murder, Chicago's St. Jude Police League held its 91st annual Memorial March to honor fallen soldiers and their families. It kicked off at 8 a.m. along the lakefront from Museum Campus Drive to Waldron Drive, where the Gold Star Memorial is located. The names of nearly 600 fallen officers are listed on that memorial. Ariana is the second officer to lose her life within the last couple of months. CPD hopes the event sends a message to families of fallen officers that they are loved and remembered. 
you're seeing right here are actually all Chicago police recruits holding pickets that show the faces of those who have died in the line of duty. Now, CPD says it hopes this annual gathering sends a message to families of fallen officers that they are loved and remembered. The marshal heads south on Museum Campus Drive to Waldron Drive, where the Gold Star Memorial is located. The names of the nearly 600 fallen officers are listed on that memorial. We spoke with police families who told us about how stressful this job can be. With them working in different districts, I never knew when they'd come home or at times if they would come home. And you want to make sure you let them know you love them before they leave the house because that might be the last time you get to say it. As of right now, there are no leads in the case and the motive is still unknown. An autopsy has been scheduled for Sunday and the case remains ongoing. I'm interim, interim Superintendent Eric Carter. I'm here to brief you on the tragic loss of a department member this morning. At approximately 1.42 this morning, we received a call of an alert for shots fired in the 8100 block of South Blackstone. Responding officer responded. Responding officers responded and found one of our own uh, suffering gunshot wounds. The officer picked our officer up, put him in the back of a squad car, and immediately brought to the University of Chicago Hospital, where she succumbed to her wounds early this morning. Uh, right now, it's very preliminary. Uh, not much information is known, um, but shots were fired. Uh, the officer was brought here and unfortunately pronounced. Um, several hours ago. The investigation is still early on and until we have more we will update you. But right now we ask that you keep the officer and her family in, in, in your prayers as well as the men and women of the Chicago Police Department who sacrifice everything including their lives on the line for this city every day. So we ask that you keep us in your prayers and keep them uplifted and please thank an officer if you see them while you're out here for the hard work that they do uh, each and every day to protect this city. And with that, I'll introduce Mayor Lightfoot for a few comments. It's unfortunate that we're standing here again today um, to talk about another tragedy that has befallen um, one of our bravest citizens. Um, I had an opportunity to speak with the family of this officer who, as you might imagine, is completely shattered. <clears throat> I won't speak for uh, the mother, but I can tell you that she poured everything that she could into her child. No mother wants to wake up to the tragic news that their child is dead, and dead to something as awful and tragic as gunfire. It goes without saying, but I've directed the superintendent to spare no expense to make sure that we find the people responsible for this and bring them to justice. Of course, that's cold comfort to a family that is now grieving and has to walk this journey of grief and tragedy that no family should have to walk, and certainly not under these circumstances. <clears throat> there are some who say that our police officers are not worthy of our respect. There are some who say that we should not be supporting and funding our police department. I would urge any person who holds that view to reflect on moments like this. As we walked across the street, I was reminded of the tragic death of Ella French, because she too was brought to this hospital. We gathered here with the media at that time. Our officers, and particularly our young officers, as this one was, give their life in service, understanding that this might be their fate. But still, they don the uniform every day. They go out to protect us. They run towards danger every single day. But folks in this city, we need to do everything we can to support our police officers. And as the superintendent said, if in your journeys today or tomorrow, or even the next day, you see an officer, thank them. Thank them 
for their service because they are deserving of our gratitude but also they're deserving of our support. We've asked on behalf of the family who made a special request to me, you will obviously undoubtedly learn the, ner the name and circumstances of the officer and her family. They've asked, please honor their privacy and media stay away, please. I think that's the least that we can do for them in this time. Well, as the superintendent said, as this um, unfolding tragedy develops, as the department learns more information, they'll be happy to share it with you. But on behalf of the family, specifically at their request, I'm asking the media, don't go on their street, don't try to talk to their neighbors, don't knock on the doors, just leave them in peace today, tomorrow. Give them the dignity that they deserve and the respect that they deserve in this moment of tragedy. Thank you. Fifth district. Fifth district. Three years of service. Email? Yes. Had she just gotten off work? Yes. All right, any other questions? Barbara Martin, you're on, anyone else? Sure. I'm just curious. You have nine days left in office. Mm -hmm. We've had to be at the podium. Well, I think of myself as former law enforcement. I'm a former federal prosecutor. I've worked in this police department in the early 2000s. I saw up close the sacrifices that these brave men and women make every single day. No one quite understands, unless you are a police officer yourself, what feelings you have every day when you wake up and you put on that uniform, particularly the officers that are on the front lines every single day patrolling our streets. And unfortunately, we live in a time now where people who wreak havoc, these violent habitual f offenders that need to be off the streets, um, they don't have any respect. And we've seen too many times, and over these last couple of years, a number of um, increases in the officers in uniform, in marked cars, they're getting shot. But when I got the call this morning, I wasn't just a mayor, I was a mom. I'm thinking about what the parents of this young officer would be feeling today. And as I said, I got the opportunity to spend time with a mom, siblings, and extended family members. And as I've seen way too many times, they're shattered as you would expect. And that's why I feel so strongly. We can have a policy debate about certain things, but what we should not be debating is the heroism that our officers exhibit every single day. This is a tragedy that is gonna ripple across the entirety of our department. Officers are gonna be grieving yet again. And as you know, we just buried two firefighters recently. Our first responders in the city are doing the Lord's work every single day. And we can't forget that. I never will. And I hope no one, no resident, no citizen here will ever forget the sacrifice or take it for granted. We can't. We can't. still preliminary an investigation. I don't want to give away what we currently know, but we are working on it. Yes, Anyone else? One last question? Thank you, Walter. Thank you. Appreciate you.